What's up guys, this is Schizofish. Here's everything wrong with the Final Fantasy VII Remake Demo. Nothing! It was great! I almost cried! Alright, good talk guys, I'll see you next time. I'm just kidding guys. First off, I just want to say Final Fantasy VII is one of my favorite games of all time and I really, really did enjoy the demo. I was actually very impressed with it and I can't wait for the remake to come out. I will mention some stuff that they did right, but you guys already know all that stuff. But I honestly believe there are things that could have been done better. If not for all the history, grandeur, and bias from its fan base, including myself, if I had picked up Final Fantasy VII today for the first time, this would be my thoughts. One of the things that was so impressive was the dialogue. There are some cheesy lines. A soldier's rank could be the same as his age. Mm -hmm. Guess that make you a one-year-old, huh? Live and learn. Mm, yeah. Good talk, Barrett. But for the most part, they are perfect. And honestly, the characters are coupled with amazing voice actors who really make you fall in love with the characters. Aw, you're choosing me over the reactor? That's sweet, but I'll wait my turn. Go blow her mind. And they are also graphically amazing. But whoever designed Barrett's movements at this scene in the elevator had a little extra helping of cheese that day. Cause well, it was a bit cheesy. Now Barrett has always been the most animated character in Final Fantasy VII. Using his box hands and legs to display his emotion uh, pretty often. But this? Nobody even moves like that. You can tell it's like anime-esque. But still, the cheese was real. Will it work itself out in the future? Possibly. Maybe you'll just get used to it. And there's a lot of good scenes to look forward to. I can't wait to see the scene where he checks himself out in his sailor costume. Expect some good cheese that day. Now this is it. I wanted a game where you didn't have to make excuses for the character's thoughts, actions, and words that didn't happen to make sense. Basically, I didn't want another Game of Thrones season 8. Yeah. Thanks, D&D. Now what gives this demo an extra helping of cheese is, is just the whole scenario of the demo, or rather, the beginning of the Final Fantasy VII Remake game. You're telling me it was that easy to sneak into a reactor, something that important, and blow it up? Barely any guards? I mean, it's obviously a setup. But my point is, is where are all the workers? Like, who's running the reactor? I would have thought they would have added some workers in the reactor. It's believable, or a more believable environment. Like, did nobody ever wonder why Avalanche and Cloud were the only people that got off the train? A whole train pulls right up. Nobody gets off. Would have just made things more believable. And when it's not believable, there's cheese. No workers, just guards. Shinra's reactors are completely self-sufficient. Or somebody's trying to save some money here. I mean, look at these intermittent laser systems. It's like Shinra Electric Power Company is trying to save a buck wherever they can. I never understood the point of not having just like all the time lasers. Maybe we'll let somebody in if they're good enough. Now, the laser system is a nice addition, but honestly to me, the way it was done kind of felt like a cop out. They just kind of put it there implying that in this new FF7 world, of course, security would be tighter in the reactor. Huh. We should add some lasers. Oh yeah? Where? I don't know, just put them right there. I mean, just look where they put it. Like, what exactly is over there that they need a laser system? A bunch of boxes, cones, ladders? Lasers should be like here in the hall, guarding the entrance to the reactor or something. Can you imagine being the storage guy for like Amazon and every time you're trying to grab a damn box, you get hit by a laser? But then you have Avalanche. This ragtag crew with the big mean boss, Barrett, who does come off pretty menacing at first glance. But after all said and done, it just comes off like a joke. Your first impression of Barrett is this huge menacing figure who's hired you to help him do his menacing things, which are things that require in-depth planning and deep knowledge of the inner workings of Shinra and probably a history of conflict with them as motivation. To put it simply, Barrett had a lot of homework to do, knowing the ins and outs of the reactor, but to get there, Barrett gives an epic speech about the planet dying and the bomb just does about nothing. Like when it happened, I was actually confused. Like, was I supposed to laugh at this scene? Was it supposed to be like comical? Cause it felt like it was supposed to be, but it also felt like it wasn't really supposed to be. I mean, they didn't even need a bomb to do that kind of damage. I could have did that with Barrett's gun arm. It just makes Avalanche look like a joke to go all the way there through all of that and have a dud bomb. Even after Shinra basically lets you in through the front door. Now this could have been exactly what the creators were going for, but you would have thought that Barrett or somebody in Avalanche would have thought the whole situation was highly suspect or a trap. Like you gotta know there's gonna be cameras and stuff. So the whole thing just feels slightly out of place, out of character, and a little bit unbelievable. 
Would you like some cheese with that? Some smaller minor things also. Things seem a little slightly off cue. Like Jesse when she's talking to Cloud and asking him about Tifa. He starts to answer and all of a sudden they look at the elevator. But then you don't hear the elevator make a sound till after they look. We make the excuse that they probably heard something that we didn't. But now imagine that happening in Hollywood. Kind of takes away the effect of the scene. Or like those old movies where we're supposed to be fighting each other. And the like you can clearly see the fist over here and he's just like Hah! If you watch that movie nowadays it wouldn't be as believable. You would think it's a comedy and to be a self-serving of cheese for you. Maybe the game has miscues because of the change in language. Maybe they animated it the whole scene to be in Japanese and it takes longer to say things. Which is another reason why I wanted to play the game in Japanese. Unfortunately that option wasn't available in the demo. Maybe it'll be available on the actual remake. Just out of curiosity to see if the game flows smoother. And maybe Barrett's movements will match his voice. Now the hardest part of doing the battles was the actual battle system itself. Learning the controls was a curve. But I actually don't really have any complaints here. I'm okay with that. I'm actually looking forward to it. Man, I'm hoping that they have a part at some point where you could use all the characters at the same time. There is a slight of cheese in the battle system with the enemies who just stand there waiting for their gauge to fill up before they attack you. Which I'm really hoping they fix with an update for a hard mode. Because I need every boss in this game to feel like the end of the world. I really do. I want to feel like I'm fighting for every inch of life. Of course, the music was phenomenal. Thank you, Nobu Yamato and company. The graphics were so good. I mean, was it just me or did you guys also find yourselves looking at everyone's strands of hair? So yes, even after all of that cheese, I am so excited for this game and to be here on this journey a whole quarter century later. And most of all, to do it with all of you. Go ahead and leave a like Subscribe to our channel for more content, and I'll see you guys later.